There are a lot of recorded chess games out there. Among them, some are usually considered more exciting than others because of a brilliant play, terrible mistake or some rare checkmate. But what actually makes a chess game crazy? And could we use that to pinpoint the most insane chess match? Well, let's write a bit of code to find out. So the plan was pretty simple, just assign some estimated score to a bunch of chess games based on particular things you detect in them, and then rank them all by this score. The first thing I thought could probably indicate an interesting game is just the number of sacrifices that happen throughout it, since more brilliant moves and complicated positions should hopefully make for a better game. You'd also be able to weight how many points are given for each one, so that for example a sacrifice queen would be more significant than the bishop. So to use as a baseline for everything else, I just gave each sacrifice the same number of points as the value of the piece. To determine whether or not something had actually been sacrificed, I just checked whether there were either more attackers of the piece than its defenders, or one of the attackers were lower in value than the sacked piece. Annoyingly, you've also got to write code to ensure that pieces that were just traded off but are now technically hanging are not considered sacrificed. Which you can do by checking if the value of the piece that used to be at the capture square is the same or higher than the one that's there now. I guess that's a pretty good start, but another thing I wanted to look for were promotions, since these moves are relatively uncommon, especially when under-promoting to something other than a queen. And while I did give a handful of points for queen promotions, I gave extra to the rarer knight promotions, and even more for rooks and bishops. There's also credit given to each position where there are more of the same type of piece than is already there at the beginning. From here, I just added a few smaller things for stuff that happened in the opening stage, which being kind of lazy, I just defined as whenever there were at least 20 pieces still left on the board, and less than 15 moves had been played. I gave some points for each position where any of the kings are in the two central ranks, where they would likely be in a lot more danger, and there'd also be points for whenever it was moved several times in a row, since I guess moving it halfway across the board at the start of the game doesn't usually happen. So I now have a function that takes a chess game and provides an estimated craziness score. You have to keep in mind though, this function is far from perfect, it's just based off what I think would make a crazy game, and how relatively important each heuristic is. Nonetheless, I think it should still give us some interesting results, so now I just need to find a database of games to look through. As a bit of a test run, I just used this one here of around 750,000 Grandmaster games from chess.com in 2022. I wrote some code to iterate through each game in the CSV file, keeping track of the highest scoring games, which are then dumped to a log file at the end. After painfully waiting around 7 hours for it to process, I realised there was a bit of a problem in my algorithm. Pretty much all of the highest score games were completely normal, except for the end, where they would basically farm points from promotions, because we all can't resist humiliating opponents who can't find the resign button. There were also a lot of stalemate traps, which I guess are pretty cool, but I didn't like that the entire game was more or less highlighted by that one thing. To fix this, at least to some extent, in each position I would check if either side was up a large amount of material, and if they were for at least a certain number of moves, I just discarded the game. Anyway, after testing it, it seemed to be a lot better, so I guess it's time to find a bigger database. In the end, I found a project called Kaiserbase, a set of 5.5 million master level games, which using this program called SCID, I just put into one massive PGN file. For such a large number of games, I had to use a small server to crunch through the data in the background, because it ended up taking around 72 hours to process every game. Still, I eventually had some results, so here's some highlights from the silliest games in chess. So it goes into a Sicilian defence, everything gets traded off in the centre, white decides to sacrifice the bishop on c5, if you take rook d7 I guess and then you just win this back, after white just trades everything off, the king just runs into the centre, takes everything, and then they just promote to two more queens. Queen a1 I think is why, this is the only thing that defends this, and they literally just get another queen. So it's just six total queens on this board, I, I really think I've seen this in the some chess video. It is! 
is. He literally posted about this game last year. Look at this. But this game is wild. G6, the modern defense. He sets this up, has to put the knight back. Queen d2, e5, takes the pawn, but then doesn't even do anything about it. Not even rook f3 one. E takes d4 played, and then just rook e5. <laughs> you take? 95? If I just move the queen back. Now you have knight f8, so that's the idea. Okay, at least rook e1 is played. e6, knight h7, completely sacrificing the knight. Why? Rook h5 played. Why can't you do this? Oh, it just takes. And now there's... Damn, okay. King f8, just trying to run the king out. Hasn't black just escaped? Queen g5, the knight goes all the way back. Rook h8. Queen h7 played, but that's bad. Queen h6, I don't know why. So those were some pretty wild games, but just out of my own interest, let's try a database from the top computer chess championship, or TSEC. Most of the matches here are in slower time controls, and, well, these are engines, so there should be some pretty high level matches. I downloaded pretty much everything from the website, and after another couple hours of processing, I finally got some results. We were now given this game, between the Komodo Dragon engine and Scorpio NN. This is probably the most insane game I've ever seen, so here it is. So it starts off with c4 and e5, and it seems like a really normal game for a while, until white just randomly plays h4. And the thing is, then black plays h5, completely gives up the pawn straight away, but then apparently black has rook to h8. We are 8 moves into the game right now, and white plays the first brilliant move, queen to b1, defending this knight tactically through a fork. Queen d7, trying to trade the queens, but here white just plays rook takes b6. The rook is taken, bishop takes b6, trying to get the king away from the queen, and then the next brilliant move, knight to e4. If you take, you are going to lose the queen here. F4 played, again sacrificing the same knight. The crazy thing about this move is that if you take this, you just played like F takes E5, and apparently white is just miles better here. One of the top moves here is Rook C7. I don't know what any of this means. Queen F7 played instead. Knight G3. Black does finally take the knight on E4. Queen D7 offering a trade. Knight F5 declining the trade, and then black just randomly plays Rook H6. Just completely giving up this, but apparently if this happens, black is just fine. Just rook d1, queen to e6, and then just rook to d6. <laughs> Another brilliant sacrifice of the rook this time. But of course, if you take this, you are going to get forked. So obviously you can't do that, so black decides to do it anyway. <laughs> because apparently that's actually the top move. And then after that happens, just f5. h6 played another pawn sacrifice by white, but if you take this, you are going to get forked. Black starting their own attack here. h7, the rook goes away, f7. And this is the crazy thing, like knight b4 attacking the a2 pawn, White also sacks that one. Black doesn't even take it, instead attacking the bishop this way, and then just g5. You don't even need the c3 bishop, it's fine. Because g6. Well, how do you stop this? c3 play, just as I said earlier, Black's coming in with a promotion here. I will never be able to explain this in a million years. And white just promotes to another queen. And the thing is, black doesn't even take it. And after c2, white just immediately sacrifices the queen again. <laughs> so king a7 played, queen a5 check, g7, king a7, and then just third queen. Black starts giving checks. Queen b8. After takes, you promote to another queen <laughs> with a fork. Queen f4. And now there's just nothing that can be done. And eventually, white wins by checkmate. Alright, well, there we have it the craziest games in chess. Well, kind of. At the end of the day, crazy is just a really subjective description of a chess match. Some of the most interesting are just the ones full of mistakes, and the ones with the best stories behind them. So really, it just means whatever game is craziest to you.